if you're ready to turn your 2D logo into a 3D logo, let's jump right in. This is what the finished product is going to look like, and this is to help us often imagine what it might look like in real time. What I'm going to do, this is the original 2D logo that you're going to be starting with. So you will go to upload photos and you will upload your logo, which will be a flat 2D design. All right. So from here, what we're going to do is I really felt like this was missing a back element. So you will see that I have chosen to add that in for the sake of the 3D logo. Now, this is something that I just felt this design lent itself to. What I'm teaching you can totally be done just as it is. So we'll go through those steps now, but you will see that I will then add in this white element at the back just to center the whole design. Okay, so you're going to go to upload, you're going to click upload file, and you are going to select the, your 2D logo, and you are then going to upload it and insert it into Canva. Now, the first step that we're going to do is go to edit image, and then we're going to go down to shadows. We're going to put on a drop shadow, and then we are going to adjust the amounts so that it serves us well. And you just really want to use your eye for this to get a feel for something that you feel is working for the 3D effect. Mm, I like it around the 25 mark for this one. The blur. You don't want too much of a blur, I feel. That's it as solid. Quite like that. 11. Right, so once you've got that, what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this and um, we're just going to then, so that, that's already got the shadow now. What we're going to do now is we're just going to recolor this. So we're going to use Duotone and this is essentially for the shadow <clears throat> element of it. So we're going to now um, go to custom, which is great because you can now choose your own color and we're just going to make a sort of lighter version of it. So we're going to go for like a gray, gunmetal gray and that looks good. And then we're going to click on edit image again, and we're going to go down to shadows, football again. And we all we're going to do now is we're just going to change the color of the shadow to a sort of a darker gray. You can see the color point here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy this. So we go back to our copy, the, short, the shortcut, the keyboard shortcut is command C. And then we're going to bring it up whoop, to here. And we're now going to be very careful in our placement of it. In that we are going to, oh, it's not selected. We are going to now try and create this shadow effect. So we are going to just have it slightly off. So first of all, line it up and then you can you're wanting to just take everything into account here. You're thinking about the um, so I'm going to just imagine where the light source is coming from. That always helps me to place that shadow well. And there we have that looks quite good. And now because this is the shadow one, you're now going to go up to position and you're going to send that to back. Okay. Um, so that's not looking quite right. So this is now you, where you go to layers at the top here. You've got a range and layers. Go back to layers and you can now see your layers. This is where my shadow is. So this will be selected and you can actually almost tweak it by using the arrows. But as it is selected like that, we can now play with that selection a little bit to create that, um, that push out of the colors. Okay. These colors, I want to change slightly. So I'm going to go up to edit image, duotone, and I'm now just going to, um, you can either pick from one of these. Let's choose them to the duotone there, right? So, but here, what we're going to do is we're going to go to shadows and we're going to try and come up with a sort of a browner, warmer color for that. That's what it's looking like so far, which looks great. We're now going to add in that back central element that I was talking about. So we're now going to go to our elements and you can type in circle and there we have it. We're just going to, we need to be, we will re check on the resize in a minute. Back up to edit image as you did before. 
back down to the, to the football for shadows and drop shadow and we are going to have so the important thing here is that your blur amount can obviously vary but the angle needs to be the same as your previous one so that it looks like light is coming from the same direction distance is similar but it's less critical and Right, and the blur amount we have is 28. So I've just inputted similar values to what we had before, but obviously it all depends on how it looks. So now what we're going to do is you've got this, the shadows, the angle is the same as your original image. You're going to go to position and you're going to send it backward so that you make sure that you, it is now behind your um, logo. It is still selected at the moment. If you deselect it by accident, you can always go to layers and find it here to help you select it. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're just going to make sure so that the placement is now correct. You've got to be careful with this because the shadows can actually have an impact on where it sits. Once you've got it in position, you can send it backward. And there we have it. We've now got our 2D logo. Remember, I've added on this base as an extra, um, but that is the tips and tricks for converting that to a 3D image. Once you are finished, don't forget to share and you're going to go download. This is to download your image. You can download it with a transparent background. You want to make it as large as possible. You can either have it as a PNG or if you've got the premium version in SVG. And then you just click download and you'll have it there in your library. So there we have it, your 3D logo from your original 2D logo. So you now have the tools to create these simple effects to create any 2D logo into a 3D object. Simple but effective, which is how we like to work. We're going to be looking at more special effects for logos in the upcoming videos. So I'm Gigi from Spotted Hat Design. I really enjoyed you joining us today. Let me know how you got on in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want more tips and tricks from Canva for new business owners that are looking to create a logo that is professional, sleek, and clean.